Welcome to Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Roots, and or Roots 3. Uh, so this is going to be an episode covering all of the staffs, staves, whatever you want to call them, the magic wands that you use to do all sorts of cool things from offense, defense, utility, farming, and more. And as you could see in the intro, I am currently wearing a Sylvan arm armor set, which is going to be very, very helpful in making your ingredients last. Uh, because staffs, uh, in this case, they use things. So if I use this spell, watch down on the bottom left corner, you'll start seeing some uh, numbers dropping down on some of those moon glow and baffle caps, and they're slowly degrading into non-existence. So you're going to want to get as much of a discount as you can for each piece of armor that you wear of the Sylvan set of armor, which is actually slightly better, I believe, than uh, uh, iron armor. Yeah, uh, it's slightly worse. It's like a half an armor unit less but i mean it's still really good um fully enchantable but every one of these that you wear you get more of a discount i believe it's currently set at two percent per piece uh, uh maxing out at eight percent that may change that might increase uh but in this current version that i'm in it is set for that and with that being said you will need a component pouch which the default recipe is pretty cheap. Any wool colors, any kind of chest, uh, a basic chest and some string should get you a component pouch. If you have multiple component pouches, this is going to be an issue uh, because in the current version, now this may change as well, uh, but in the current version, it will only recognize the one that is currently the leftmost in your hot bar. Well, yeah, basically I'm going to have it listed on here uh, the order of priority if you have a component pouch or a pot carry pouch, which actually gives you a lot more storage, is uh, how these things are going to use ingredients. So if I open this up, any of these things in the little test tubes on the side here. So if I pull this out, it looks like kind of like a little jar that's kind of holding your, your ingredients. If you are using these, you know, because your component pouch uses only up to six, I recommend you only have a, uh, a staff or staves that you are currently carrying or all the spells in there that doesn't use more than six at a time uh, unless you're willing to switch it out. And then you could probably rename your pouches to uh, match the name of your staff, like Valenteer staff. I could name this one here uh, from an apothecary pouch. I could rename that to the Valenteer pouch or something like that. And therefore, I know that I have all the ingredients already in there. And that's how that would work. Now, in this case... Uh, I already have all these things in this place. If I switch these ones around, it will then give me some kind of issue, most likely. Yeah, you don't have enough baffle cap in your component pouch, Valen, which is kind of, kind of an annoying thing. But like I said, it's just, you know, still early days for this mod. It is in a full release right now, and I it is fully playable. These are just really minor things right now. But you can see that there's no baffle caps in there. And even if there were in the main comp uh, component pouch, not on the little in, uh, side section over there, it wouldn't really, uh, it wouldn't actually recognize that. It doesn't recognize them in your inventory either. It has to be in some kind of uh, pouch over here, which the apothecary one, once again, is probably really well worthwhile if you can get it because you're going to want to carry as many of these things as possible. Now, um, if you look here, having it on your hotbar from left to right is the highest importance to lowest importance. So it will use this apothecary pouch before this component pouch. If I switch these around, it will use the component pouch before the apothecary pouch. That's pretty much what I'm talking about with the priority for this. And then it will also work in this order going across the top here. Then it will continue on the second row, and then it will continue on with the third row. And that should be the priority for uh, how it looks for things in an inventory, if you're curious about that. Now let's get on to the good stuff, because I'm I'm tired of just jawing on about that boring stuff there. Let's, let's play around with these staffs. Now I separated them up into a few categories. Some of them might overlap slightly into the others, but there's more or less offense, defense, utility, as well as farming. And some of the some of the utility and farming might actually overlap a little bit. But uh, yeah, if you have one of these, some runic dust, which you just take some rune stone and you smash it up in a, uh, a mortar and pestle, you get some of this stuff. You can clear off items on your staff. In this case, I've got a grove supp supplication spell. Hooray! I am never going to need to use that again because I got myself a gro uh, one of these grove stones and I'm not worried about it. So what you do is you take some of that runic dust, you put your uh, staff that you want to clear off of there instead of having to create a new one. You can then reuse it, or if you have it in a really weird order that's bugging the heck out of you, you can clear it off and then uh, redo it. 
this way you you know you can still reuse it though i will admit a staff is really cheap to make so it's probably just better to make yourself a new staff but there you go i now have an empty an empty staff and it says selected slot one no spell yep that's that's pretty much it but uh let's let's get that one out of here let's get into some of the cool stuff we're going to cover uh let's go with the utility first and work our way over to uh farming defense and offense because some of the some of these ones are <laughs> really cool just in general um now let's start all the way back here we currently have fey light this one is excellent for these little glowy bulbs that you see in the air as you can tell there is a bounding box so i could actually you know break it very simply i am in survival so if i right click i can place one it will randomly change to some faded rainbow colors over time but all you need to do is just punch it once and it goes away you can also replace it there we go and walk through it they don't actually take up anything but you can't place any blocks there without just destroying the block so it's really cool you can't just keep placing them if you look on my hot bar it takes a second for it to recharge but i mean it's really great for mining it's very pretty to have it around your base as you can see here i currently have several just kind of floating up and around the, the trees it really does give your grove a magical presence and it, it's a really cheap spell altogether i am not going to be going over the recipes because they do tend to change with this being a uh well more or less uh a mod always being updated i mean it is regularly updated uh they're, they're not hesitating on this but if you so desire just go to here the spell recipes tab you can always look it up in the entry index but you just click on here you can see how each of them are made uh i mean the one that i just did there fey light you can just take these ingredients smash them up in a mortar and pestle same as with any of them and then you can get the other ingredients the only exception to this is that there are some few that you can actually upgrade in this case i will click here on iced touch which we will cover briefly but you can make it and so on and, and grant this ability on here but if you see there's another page you then can also infuse that uh spell powder this, this stuff here the spell dust with a set of boots and you can also change the effect to something else and you can have both those different effects on your staff so we will be covering that staff as well in fact it's probably coming up very shortly i don't remember which one of these it is but let's move on we've got shatter this is one of the best spells you could possibly get in this mod in my opinion because it's relatively easy to make uh if i can get uh shatter here it's it's not very difficult to do you just need some stalag ripes really i mean i did say i wasn't going to cover the, the recipes i lied a little bit there but it, let me uh let me go underground we're going to actually jump down here and then we can start using this thing now if i target a block let's actually go over here it will break that block i'm looking at the face that i'm looking at and the block below it thus if i had enough uh slag ripes in my inventory i'd be able to break it there we go uh, and it will break those two blocks thus making an excellent one by two space for you to mine in so you can just zap through here and you can see i'm just holding the button down right now this is how fast you can mine through it's quicker than a diamond pick my friends so it's it's highly recommended now if you want to mine the top or bottom face it's the same thing it goes the block that you're looking at and the block below it so or closer to you in this case there we go just like that if i look up it'll be this block and this block when i break here there we go so it will break towards you therefore you can actually make very quick and easy uh the ladders or stairways so actually i'm i'm kind of doing this a little bit uh, off but you get the idea here there we go just takes a little bit and you've got yourself a, a stairway that uh, hopefully you've uh, made properly really really good it's one of the few tools that has actually been designed to uh, enable you to make a mining stairway a bit simpler um in in crafting and it's just really good really good uh and it doesn't use up very much once again you're wearing your sylvan so suit it is even cheaper combine that with your fey light and you've got yourself a mining setup very good uh, i mean heck i've got a mining staff right here that has shatter fey light and light drifter that's right there is another one called light drifter oh magnetism that's another good one to have with you um so if i have uh something mm, you know what we're gonna hold off on magnetism reason being is that i will be able to show it to you best in this area over here with the farming setup 
But I put it over here in the utility because it is it is really utility. It's not necessarily farming. But basically it will draw in all items in a large area, including XP orbs now, which is a bit of an upgrade. And I like it. It's very simple, straightforward, and you get the magnet when you need it or want it, not necessarily as a constant rate and you're sucking up everything in everybody's base because you're just walking around and you've got it in your bobble slot or something. Nothing like that. It's It's a click it to use it type effect. Now, if you go here, Light Drifter, this is one I was talking about. So once you click this, uh, you won't you won't have enough rescue bulbs. Let me switch these around. There we go. You, you get a poof, and you are now invisible, like you're in a, a third person there, you know, kind of kind of looking through stuff. Now that you have creative mode controls is what that happens. You're basically flying in air in midair when you cast this. So if I cast this, boop, I can then go down by sneaking. And I can go up by flying. And yes, that's right. You can see through the ground. That's the whole point of this mod, Light Drifter. You can therefore sneak, look around, around you. Hey, I found a treasure chest over here. I can now mine towards that with my Shatter spell. And all I need to do is just cast this again. And I, I can sneak down. And eventually, I, I see I'm, I'm transparent. I'm not taking damage, nothing like that. I don't attract enemies. They don't see me. And I can use it to find locations. Even if I get down here and I try and uncast or something like that, I, I can't. All it can do is allow you to see around. But that's all you really need to do to be able to mine the stuff. Uh, now, it, it will teleport you back to your original spot where you uh, where you cast the spell. So if you want to see what is in this hut before you go into it, you can do so. Oh, look at that. There's a neat, neat little, little bed in here. And then you don't need to worry about getting ambushed by mobs or traps or something like that. So it, it's really cool, really uh, effective, especially if you take it along with a Shatter spell, a Fey Light spell, and a Magnetism spell. So it, it's just really, really good. Moving on, we've got Sense Danger. Let's see, are there any mobs nearby? Yes. Yes, there are. There's a lot of mobs nearby. That's, that's Sense Danger. Basically, it's just good like that. Now, let's see here. Oh, Sense Animals. Do we have any animals nearby? Yes. Yes, we do. In fact... They're all over the place, <laughs> and between the two of them, you can sense just about everything. Uh, I don't, I don't think that it works on players, but I mean, heck, uh, it's pretty darn cool. And it gives you the option to easily find things if you're looking for like a cow or something like that, and all you're seeing are red dots on your like uh, your little mini map up here in the corner or something. And you want to know if if there's any kind of critters, or you don't even have a mini map. You could use that to more easily find the animals or mobs that you're looking for, or just be aware that there is 250 skeletons just over there uh, that, that are trying, that a, a spawner has not shut off for some reason, you know, whatever. So, Sky Soarer, this one here will kill you. You have been warned, but it's a really good one <laughs> because you will fly in the direction that you aim for a few seconds, just like this. Now you notice it ended as I was over top of something, nothing, and fell and hit the ground. So if I want, I'm, I'm basically, let's, let's actually see if I can do this. Whee! Yeah, so you, you can use it to fly up, and sort of like in Terraria, you can use it to fly down too. Uh, like if you're using one of those uh, grappling hooks or something. So if I aim down... I can safely land with this option. So that's something to take into account. If you want to, let's actually aim here. You can use it effectively to gain uh, height. You can use it to fly, though there is a brief period where you won't be able to use it. So you're going to want to be very aware of that. Once you get very close to the ground, you use it for a safe landing. So <laughs> this can save you from a really harsh fall, but it can also get you up very high distances. It just takes a little bit of practice. So be careful, because it will kill you. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Second Wind. This one here is very simple, but yet really helpful. If ever you wanted to go under in uh, water area, you notice my air bubbles are currently dro dropping down. Well, you just click this. And hey, look at that. I got all my air bubbles back. You don't need to worry about drowning in the water anymore. That's it. It's a very simple uh, spell, very specialized, but it's excellent for underwater exploration. Moving on, we've got Iced Touch. Now, this one here is one of the ones that I had originally mentioned. I have two levels of it. I have Ice Touch 1 and Ice Touch 2. Ice Touch 1. This is going to have a very simple effect of turning water 
and lava uh, once this thing is, has recharged, which it takes a second, into obsidian. There you go. That That's pretty much it. It's very basic. If you do the upgrade where you add, infuse some iron boots onto the spell powder, it will turn into a much more powerful version, uh, but it is not highly targetable like this version is here. Instead, you get a cloud effect around you, and you gain, therefore, kind of a, a, a water walk feature where you will turn things into obsidian or ice as you walk around. So just be aware that that will last quite a while as well. Uh, I think yeah, it's still going on there. So yeah, and you have a freeze effect on your inventory if you do want to see how long it will last on your person. But it's pretty darn cool for traveling across water. Obviously, the spell recharges before it runs out, so you can easily keep recasting it and travel long distances on uh, uh, water bodies, or just use it to transform uh, obsidian, things like that. It might even be good on your uh, mining setup so that you can just automatically freeze obsidian. You don't need to bring water along in this case. You can just, you know, kind of freeze it automatically. So let's move on to the farming stuff. I did mention the magnetism spell. Keep that in mind. We're going to be checking that out in just a moment here. But we have here, uh, no, we don't want that one. We want this one, harvest. Okay, now <laughs> this one is very key. And I'm actually going to go out into th uh, like a third person view so you can see this when I cast it. Ready? So I'm going to cast harvest. Boom. <laughs> it's quite a lot of stuff. So here, here's the other thing here is that um, I, I don't have any other spells in here. And yes, you can hold up to five spells on each one. But if you look, I have magnetism on the side of this other spell staff here. So let's switch to magnetism. And now when I look at this and I click, all that stuff just went in my inventory. Pow. I just harvested all the Pereskia and the bulbs, and the spirit herb seeds and the spirit herbs. That that was that was very effective. Very quick. Love it. Uh, I, I highly recommend you put magnetism and harvest on the same staff. Now, on top of that, if you wanted to specially just grow one item at a time, uh, growth infusion. Actually, I, I still have that harvest staff. I think I put down the wrong staff here. Let me grab this. Yeah, I did. There we go. Uh, if you want to grow one thing at a time, growth infusion is good for you. It doesn't use up very much Terra Moss, and it's, it's effective. So just grow, and there you go. Just point and hold. I have a click to harvest right now, so that's a little bit of a concern. But it will actually uh, go further than you can, you know, so I could feasibly, like, aim at specific areas over here and therefore individually grow this stuff. But if you want something a bit more, oh, I don't know, beefy, let's go with rampant growth. And if you look here, let's look and bring that up. So if I hold the button down, I will start doing a massive area effect growth spell on all this stuff. Now this is just what I have currently set up. It, it may reach a little further than what I've got, but still just the same. <laughs> the ingredients for this spell are currently in this field. Yeah, and it, it only uses up a very tiny fraction to uh, to get this. So you could easily just pop a few of the ingredients in the field and therefore uh, you can automatically replenish that in your stores very simply. Now. In the center here, I have a staff. This is my uh, specialized farming staff, Farmer's Bounty is what I'm calling it, where it does rampant growth, harvest, and magnetism. So right now, it is on harvest. So all I need to do is look up, and just so you guys can see what's going on, I click this, harvest, sneak, right click, magnet, sneak, right click, and then I can uh, grow everything back into place again and repeat. And therefore, I have turned myself into a one-man automated massive farming machine. So it's a really, really good effect. And I highly recommend that you make the Farmer's Bounty Staff, which, which is what I'm calling it, uh, copyright TM, all that stuff. No, I'm kidding. You, you, can, you can just make it whatever you want it to be. Uh, all right. So let's get going on the next part. We, we covered utility. We covered farming. Let's cover defense. Defense. What? Petal shell. This one here has a, uh, a small visual glitch. You will see it activate. There we go. But that's it. <laughs> In early versions of this mod, 
it actually worked properly. There is currently still a visual glitch. It will probably be fixed in uh, future versions uh, where you have like, uh, if you ever played Mario Kart, you'll have like little circular, uh, little like instead of turtle shells, you'll have petals floating around you. And it works just like those where if something attacks you, uh, instead of you being attacked, the shell will take the damage uh, for you. So there, I just cast that and it lasts for a few hits whatnot yeah you stay down there okay so that's the idea on that one it gives you a little bit of a, a few hits on defense it lasts for quite a while now let's continue on with sanctuary sanctuary kind of gives you like a breathing space uh now you notice this guy here let's push him away hey that's right it will keep you safe while you're holding this it uses the ingredients very slowly and therefore allows you <laughs> some measure to move into some of those difficult areas. Now, you're probably thinking, well, who, who cares about that if I've got like 25 skeletons coming at me? What do I do? Uh, well, let me get some redstone. There we go. And I can connect this. And then I've got my automated arrow shooting machine. So I hold this and it will reflect projectiles just like that. Pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, so it works on uh, keeping mobs away, keeps on... Uh, protecting you from projectiles it's really nice really nice petal shell uh if you wanted to have a little bit of a defense there somebody's like totally just wrecking you your face with some kind of uh super bow don't worry i've got stuff for you in a minute we're, we're not to the offensive stuff yet dandelion wins <laughs> this one's just fun we you can whoops <laughs> i threw the armor stand there but you can use it to kind of uh, uh launch these guys around there we go and they might be able to take, you know, some uh, damage from falling or something like that. Woo, that was a good one. You just got to be careful with right click because you might. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm missing because I'm harvesting stuff at the same time. There we go. Let's just throw you a little bit further down this hole here. There we go. Bye. All right. <laughs> Let's get on to some more staffs. All right. This one here is... Guys, this one here doesn't actually uh, work <laughs> in the current version. It will in future wor versions, I, I swear. I will even show you what it looks like. Uh, here, I'll put this in here. Oh, great. It's on a baby zombie. But what it will do is that. That's the effect. So you know that this mob will stop attacking you is what happens. But currently, I in, in my current version that I have, there's a glitch where... They attack me anyway, but that, that's the idea of it. It is uh, giving them some kind of uh, guise to follow instead of attacking you. Let's move on. Time stop. Okay, so you've got a whole bunch of mobs. Your hotbar is just a mess or your inventory is a mess or something, and you need a moment to breathe. Let's cast... St oh, I can't, I can't cast that because I just clicked the wrong one. Let's click stop. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, let me switch this to another spell. And then I can just kill these guys off real quick. Thank, thanks, guys, for just kind of hanging out there. That was great. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, time stop. Really, really good defensive item there. Uh, yeah, let's put that back down. That was That's just really, really good. Okay, moving on. We've got... Uh, oh, wait. Actually, yeah, I, I was showing you the next one, which I have in my uh, inventory here. Life Drain. It is so good. It is so, so good. Let me uh, allow, uh, let me show you how this works. Now, first, I, I do need to have a little snack because my food is getting a bit low for my likes. But if you have one target, you use life drain. It will hurt him quite a bit. Push him away at the same time. Eventually take him out. It will replenish your health bar slowly. If you have a whole bunch of bad guys and you sweep across, it will replenish your health bar very fast. And they don't have to be bad guys. You can do this with just passive animals as well. But it's a really good spell. Really good. It uses baffle caps, though. So I recommend uh, if you want to grow baffle caps, which, yes, you can, use some of the uh, the, the spells up here. I believe, uh, uh, which one is it? This one, Rampant Growth, I think. Growth Infusion can help to grow these uh, a bit more if you wanted to try and grow a full-size one down here. Get out of here, spider. I don't want any of your lip. Uh, but you can grow one of these big ones 
and in safe area, harvest that up and get yourself a whole bunch of baffle caps. That's what I highly recommend you end up doing so that you can get yourself all the ingredients for the life drain spell, which is really, really good. Uh, what I'm calling the uh, volunteer staff. So let's move on, get some of this stuff out of my inventory, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, what else do we have? We've got here wildfire. Wildfire is pretty good. Uh, it's had a little bit of a change since it was originally made. Uh, now if I place down here, I'm just holding the button down. It's it's like a bit of a flamethrower effect. It's similar to life drain in its damage and how it's used. Uh, so once again, place it down. Best if you like use it in a sweeping motion on groups of enemies. So it will hurt them with damage and burn them as well. So you can have several and you can just burn them off like this. But there is a bit of a gap between there. It does do a bit more damage than uh, Life Drain as well, as it should, because it's it doesn't have that special effect. But there you go, Wildfire. Moving on here, we've got Rose's Thorns. This one here is very unique. Um, I don't know if it's defense or offense, but it, it does kill things. So it's a trap. You can set traps. It doesn't do like a ring of... of no, 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 no. You can set traps with this thing. It's really good. It's really, really good. So you can do this, do this. There you go. We've got all these little sparkles here. So if I place down a husk over here and lure him into these, he will take them, he will get poisoned, and he will eventually die because it also does contact damage at the same time. It's really good. And they last for quite a while, in fact. Um, I also realize now that I, I still have a few of these left. Yes, there aren't many left. Radiance. Okay, Radiance is the ultimate in pew-pew mastery. If you want to be able to just take out any kind of mobs, specifically undead, it will just make short work of them. This is this is the staff for you. It is ridiculous with um, its, its effects. I'll do some of this, and I'll just shoot these guys like ridiculous. Ah, it's, it's good. <laughs> it, it kills them very quickly. It's also good in a sweeping motion, um, but it works just fine on single targets as well. Uh, uh, like I said, it's also especially good on undead. So yeah, there's your wither, wither killer right there because you're going to want to be able to shoot this thing a good distance. And it'll go a little bit further than the others. Um, now, we've got special staffs here. Acid Cloud level 1, which is what I have in my hand, and Acid Cloud level 2, which is what I have over there. So, Acid Cloud 1. This will create, uh, as you hold it down, because this is a constantly being used item. Uh, in fact, let me look up at the camera like this. So... I can hold it, I create this little like green acid cloud around me. So if I toss down one of these little husks, and I can it will actually keep them at bay and also do damage. Pretty good. So I recommend you go for the upgraded version though, because it's just that much more effective. So let's put this down here, and I can use it. And look, he catches on fire and takes the acid damage in an area. It's a defensive offensive spell. It's really strong. It, it will it will wreck a lot of zombies very easily. Let me put down a bunch of these guys here. I'll be right back. Okay, that should be pretty good. I don't I have this armor on, but I've also got this group of zombies down here. Let's just jump right in, shall we? Hey, all of you must die. Yeah, okay. And they're dead. Now, of course, you know, the drawback of setting them all on fire is that if they hit you, you can be set on fire. So take that as you will. If you want your fire version or non-fire version, it's a very simple upgrade to make. And that pretty much covers all of these really, really cool, fantastic staffs. Uh, now, I made a few myself that uh, I liked, and I'm going to recommend some of them to you as well. I have three of them. Get out of my inventory. I have three of them specifically that I want to share with you guys. So let me grab all of those, and I'll be right back. All right, so just real quick, the uh, spell staffs that I'm going to suggest just for general use is going to be the Farmer's Bounty, which is going to have Magnetism, Harvest, and Rampant Growth on it. Don't do what I did here. Make sure you put uh, Harvest before Magnetism. It just makes it that much easier when you're cycling through this stuff. Uh, so I recommend it being Harvest, then Magnetism, then Rampant Growth, just so that when you cycle through these, it's a little bit easier and fluid so that you can become your uh, own auto farmer in very large, massive areas. 
Another one is a simple mining staff with Shatter, Phalite, and Light Drifter. You can put more on here very easily, but just remember, it's more things you're going to have to cycle through. I think I might actually rather have another staff uh, at that point, because between Shatter and using it several times, then placing a Light, on occasion using Light Drifter, so I'd have to cycle through a couple more times to get back there, it just becomes that much more monotonous if you have too many items on a staff as it is. Uh, especially if you're going to be using Shatter almost all the time, Fey Light occasionally, and Light Drifter rarely. <laughs> Moving on from that, we've got this one. It's just simple life drain and magnetism. That's, that's a really good one. If you want to add in some more heavy-duty offensive effects, defensive effects, whatever, feel free. But the Valenteer staff can't go wrong. Uh, no, you cannot just with some plain armor like this and no enchantments and the Life Drain staff take on the uh, Wither Boss. Uh, I, I tested that. You probably are better off with something more like a Staff of Radiance uh, for uh, Wither Killing. But um, yeah, it, it's still really good nonetheless. If you have alternate means of defense or if you're actually dodging, I mean, I was just standing there and trying it, it, it it'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> as it should. Uh, if I have uh, Protection 4 on here, I'm sure I'd be just fine because the Life Drain was pretty much offsetting the Wither uh, damage. It was just not being able to keep up with the uh, damage from the explosive blasts before. But I think that with an enchanted set of armor, I think I could take him. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this a uh, little bit by bit on Roots. Uh, this is probably going to be the last of the uh, introduction series, so as the mod gets updated, I might do further videos. If you have enjoyed this, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to thank the mod devs for uh, bringing this forward to future versions of Minecraft. It is one of my favorites. Thank you, and I'll see you guys most nights around 10 p.m. on Twitch. Come visit us there. Till next time, folks, I'll see ya.